always wanted to try a vintage pattern. So this is one that I bought online from Mrs. Depoo Depore. Depore from Mrs. Depore's vintage shop, and it's a 1920s sort of bra and pants set because I've got a really cute fabric left over from another project I was making a patchwork quilt and I thought you know it's perfect for a 1920s bra it's got sleepy sloths on so I've got I've put the whole pattern together uh printed it off so I taped it together I just have the next day to start making it so it came with some as this focuses some instructions um I probably should be a better sewer for this it's an intermediate level and I like how it's just seven things so front stream so front front seam so bands so elastic so waistband join side seams join lower seam and that's it but it has a description um, has a has nice illustrations to how it show how all the pieces go together sort of which bits go where there has been a complete lighting change from the sky <laughs> um i like as well it comes with so you, it's got an option for some flowers that you can decorate sort of the bandeau or the or the uh the knickers with and it has a nice little guide for what kind of embroidery stitches that you can use which is nice so let's see what i can do with it so this is my next step as you can see i've been working with the extremely high <laughs> high tech equipment of Muppet ruler, pencil with no point and the world's worst paper scissors that have cat food stains on them from this monster who has been no help. So I've traced... Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bear. It's very helpful. So what I've done is I traced everything onto pattern paper. So I don't like to cut out patterns because I'm weird and I, I don't I don't like sellotaping them back together. I, I prefer to have sort of separate sized pattern pieces that I can use for later. Right, madam. It's not playtime. It's not playtime. Thanks, Bear. <laughs> well... So, I, as you can see, as you can see, I have cut out everything <laughs> into separate um, pieces, into paper pieces, because I have pattern paper. That is someone's favourite toy. <laughs> right, aren't looking so hairy. Um, so I don't like cutting up patterns, and I find that if you then everything in pattern paper you can make a very quick little paper version of the garment you want so you can kind of see how it's going to look like how it's going to fit together <laughs> um so i've got two sets of wait where's my other band i've got two sets of bat of bat <laughs> Right, underneath my cat I've got two sets of bands for the top and the bottom of the bandeau to kind of trim it out and a shoulder strap that has a <sighs> shoulder strap that has a, a loop for adding elastic so I'll hopefully be able to make that together the bandeau is cut to my bust size um, if you want to measure your If you want to measure your bust, obviously have a very good tape measure. Mine is not good because all mine get destroyed <laughs> by someone. And um, you measure just under underneath your breasts, around your chest, to get your uh, a true bust size. Um, I'm trying to make this sort of non-elasticated, I guess, more like a vest. So we will see how that goes because it may just go um, terribly for me. You see, I have to work on the floor, which means that this happens because this is the largest flat surface in my house. Also, my other cat is shut out because he is not nearly as polite as this one. This one, yeah. Yeah, play, play with mommy's hand. Yeah. 
So on to step three with a bit more assistance from this one. Yeah. So now I've moved on to like cutting out my pattern as you can see <laughs> I've not exactly put it uh done it particularly well or straight. Um some pieces have to be cut on the fold to sort of produce length. Um, my fabric is obviously very 1920s. I had this left over from a patchwork quilt that I thought, well, it's nice and soft and it's cute. So I will, I'll have a go and see what happens. Um, you can hear an ice cream fan in the background. It's that time of year again. So especially when it comes to pieces like the main body of the bando, you've got sort of little points here that I will cut a space around so that I can get them to match up with each other when I'm doubling it up. And I've made sure that everything's aligned with the grain. So I've made a little note for myself. So it goes along with the grain of the fabric. So it makes it less likely to fray, make it more successful. E, uh, you can hear my bird in the background. He's being a little bit noisy at the moment, but these are my pieces right now. And so, cut my pieces out now as you can see they're all very nicely uh <laughs> higgledy piggledy um but the next step before i start construction is if you look at this bando so i've got my my tabby tabs so i can see where things have to match up and fit together but the next part as you can see here i've got this little triangle so this is for a dart because obviously clothing doesn't just fit around your body you need to sort of give it a little bit of help so the dart is a little triangle I'll fold over and sew to sort of give it some round shape so we'll look back once I it's very easy to mark out as I'll show but a work of a few moments later to see I've marked out the little triangle for my bodice darts so that begins the beginning and end of the dart so I'll pinch a match Bottom square, no, well, bottom square, Jesus. Bot <laughs> bottom of triangle to bottom of triangle. So I pin them together like so. And I'll do a very simple and loose tack along the line and then stitch over it. Same over here, iron it in place, which I should be able to do despite not having a ham. <laughs> I'll see how that goes and um, then the fold will create a curve in the fabric which should help make this into a nice cute little bodice. I shall be back in but a moment. And then as if by magic we can now see with the adding of some darts that it's now got a real nice shape almost like a corner so as you can see I've gone straight up along there I've got a little flat managed to <laughs> iron it quite well on the edge of my ironing board to create a shape and it's now got a little point so it'll curve around the bust and make a nice little shape it's really quite clever when you think about it so the next thing on my on my list is with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance which oh, i always get confused by oh Hello mister, <laughs> getting my foot. So the first thing is to sew this front seam together and then it will sort of start coming together. The pattern probably won't match up, but I think it's starting to look quite cute already. So I now have a finished sewn together little bodice thing. So the first steps are done, as you can see, it's already got a nice bit of, mm, mm, too close there, it's already got a nice bit of shape to it so you can see already where it would start to fit along the bust line, um, zigzag I've had to, oh gosh the sun's so bad today, zigzag I've had to add in because my machine is terrible at finishing edges, my, <sighs> this thing, it uh, eats the edges of fabric if I do my zigzag, so I thought I'd do it over the top, over the seam, try and at least give it some protection against fraying, but then it's got a nice little decorative kind of thing to it. So the next step is adding upper and lower bands, so what I'm going to do with those 
Hey, but is I have these ready because of I was unsure what to do with them in the shape of them so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to sew them in half inside out so more like that turn them inside out and then add them with the required seam allowance to the top and bottom and see what happens from there okay as you can see now what I've done is I've added a band around the bottom and round the top Although as I realised that, I, realized, I thought, hmm, should I have done the shoulder straps? But apparently according to the instructions, band first. But as you can see, it's made just a nice little edge to neaten it up. So the next step is taking these rough ends. As you can see, I did not do my cutting out <laughs> particularly well. Uh, taking these rough ends and securing them in place with some elastic. Because this does not, the bandeau does not cover my full back. So I'll need this on the back to... Just make it stay up, make it shape around my body more. Um, I actually had to wait for a bit. I had to wait uh, all the dip from Frumble, where I got the fabric from, who really nice. But I got this lovely elastic, which is just line it up. Just Jesus, it's just the right. Oh, hello, madam. Which is just the right size for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to cover this in fabric because I don't want, my worry is with the elastic that it's going to rub against my back and get like ingrained dirt in it over time and just sort of end up not looking you know, nice or, or clean. So I'm going to cover that in fabric um, and then cut a length to put around the backy boo of this bandeau and we'll see what happens. So uh, as you can probably tell from the lighting, <laughs> the changing lighting on this footage because it's not really... Not even uh, changing lighting on from this footage. It's been a bit time of me working on this back bit. As you can see, I very nicely covered this elastic with fabric, and it was initially uh, like that. But then I found, um, I thought, I presume from the instructions that that's how it went, sort of a bit like a, a sports bra, so sort of straight over the head. Um, it got stuck around my shoulders, <laughs> which was not what I intended. So I had to go out and get actual uh, bra fasteners which you can see looks relatively nice that side was eaten as I can get that to focus eaten up by my machine <laughs> on this side so that looks terrible as you can see it's eaten up quite a lot of this elastic it did not like sewing that anyone else has a brother XL2620 just is yours as crappy as mine because this just eats fabric constantly it's it's I can never get it to sew nicely just, just to sew nicely but um hopefully at some point in the next few months I've got my eye on a nice uh, fancy quilting one that I'm quite tempted to get but anyway back to this so as you can see it's sort of looking more bra like so not sure whether it was meant to have a strap on <laughs> it's meant to have a butt from clasp. <laughs> um, but now it does. So as you can see, it's actually starting to look pretty uh, bra-like now, which is pretty cool. Um, so I got these this really good price from a, a site called So Curvy. Um, it was a really nice price, and they do all sorts of specialist stuff for making underwear and corsets and things like that. So uh, the next step is we are make I'm making straps to go either side. So I will come back once I have made those together. So as you can see, I got the, the straps on. A little bit of decorative detail. The ones at the back were a real bitch. They, were, <laughs> they kept going onto the fabric and I tried doing it sort of stitch in a ditch. As you can see how ugly it is at the back because of the million mistakes. But it looks pretty cute at the front and the shape has turned out so it actually fits like everything else I make and you can really see how flappers achieve sort of their flat chested look because it really sort of compresses everything down ready for a night on the dance floor although I would feel very loose in this but it's cute it's comfy and I managed to make something in lockdown a genuine 1920s style bandeau so I'll probably try something else.